What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Zach's Live Trader. Here with you, as always, I am the bearded boy wonder Dave Bartosiak, and today, my friends, we've got a we've got a big one. We've got let me get this the sound right. We've got Nvidia ticker N V D A. Very excited about this one, of course. Isn't everybody excited about this one? It's like the it's like the Super Bowl for me now. Every earnings season we get to talk about NVIDIA, it's like one of my favorite, favorite days. Now, before we get into it, a little bit too much. What's up, guys? I see you trickling in. I want to share something with you. Now, I'm going to go ahead. Give me a, give me a second here. I'm going to, I'm going to fix something here so you guys, you guys can check this out. There's a shortened URL for, for this bigger video, okay? And I, I got my, my sound settings are a little strange here, so I have to apologize ahead of time. Um, this is a video from December 5th, 2016. The earnings estimates, these multicolored lines in here are the earnings estimates. And those have gone through the roof as NVIDIA has continued to beat earnings to the upside. So that's a big reason why the stock has done so well. Um, even though it's at, uh, you know, in $90 right now, 92 bucks, I think, uh, intraday here, I think this could be a $250 stock next year. No kidding. $250. That's wow. aggressive. Very aggressive, it but is. I got to get yeah. aggressive. But it has a momentum score of A, so maybe it's not out of the picture. I mean, it's it's uh, it's on its it's on the horse now. Yeah, so that 100 prints coming. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. Before yeah. Christmas or after? Well, you know, it's like if the stock goes to 90, it has to go to 100, yeah. right? It's just a rule. It always happens. It's a rule. <laughs> All right. That's right, folks. I don't know if you can hear that. I hope you can hear that. Um, let me get this volume down. Turn back down so we don't, I don't explode everybody's eardrums. So that was our. Um, Zach's rank top picks of the week kind of video that we do. Um, this was back before I was I was heading down to Sunny Isles Beach for the winter, and um, it's pretty bullish, pretty bullish on Nvidia. Now I'm gonna get this out of the way. So the reason I'm showing you that is because my long-term bullish thesis on Nvidia hasn't changed. But what has changed, for you guys who have been here with me for a while, is the way that I approach earnings. So I've had times where I've come on here and told you guys to be bearish on earnings. And not because I was bearish on the stock, but just because the actual trade I thought would work out. Now, now, now I'm giving these caveats, but I'm going to continue here because I'm not going to let myself off the hook. I have been wrong about NVIDIA. I think three out of four quarters here, okay? I've been wrong, flat out wrong when, with timing and trying to get these, these, these things going. Um, and because I, I, was, I was a victim of the too far, too fast comment, right, that you, that you hear from people. Let me tell you, too far, too fast is not a bearish argument. I'm sorry. It's just not. There has to be something more compelling than just, oh, it came too far too fast because the market doesn't care about too far too fast. We know that. We've seen it time and time again. So that's not the argument. You can say, oh, revenue growth is, is slowing and, and the projections are not what they used to be and therefore now we can't justify the valuations that we're at. That's, that's a bearish argument. But going, no, nah, it's too far too fast, that's not a bearish argument. That's a troll argument, right? That's just being a hater. Um, so you can't do that, but let's look at Nvidia here and, and try to be as neutral as positive and not allow things to cloud our judgment here, but take a look at these bad boys. All right. So as always, the black line corresponds to the right Y axis, which is price. The multicolored lines represent the evolution of our Zach's consensus estimates over time. And these corresponds with the left Y axis which is EPS. The green arrows are earnings beats. This little guy, I wouldn't worry about this little guy. That's an earnings miss for NVIDIA in 2015. Since then, 
It's been fantastic. And the growth is well documented. And I'm sure a couple of you nerds, I'm just going to circle one nerd twice. Nerd. <laughs> I'm just playing. You know, I'm a nerd too. So I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd as well. But Jeff, I know you can echo this because you do a lot of gaming, my friends. Um, you know where NVIDIA is at. So not only are they at the, the, the Cadillac of gaming, right? But the cards get used for cryptocurrency mining. And of course, you can use the argument that, hey, uh, AMD does that, you know, more and whatever. I, uh, we're not going there. Um, but you also have Nintendo Switch, which is using NVIDIA. You've got now, you know, the Volta. So, that, so they're transitioning over to a new generation of chips. So expect that to be in the guidance moving forward. Um, the, the computing strength that NVIDIA has is just unrivaled right now. It just flat out is. So they've been able to position themselves very nicely. And, you know, there's, there's big big demand this is a demand a demand side issue here these huge demands for their chips and um that's that's why they're rocking and rolling the way that they are right and nobody has what they have so there's that and, and you can shift to a bunch of trends not just not just uh you know the vr trend the virtual reality the augmented reality but you also have just these big data centers trying to crunch all these huge numbers for for ai um it, it just keeps going autonomous driving um autonomous cars rather not autonomous drive well autonomous cars it's, the list goes on and on right so so the the applications of their technology is just just astronomical right it's mind bending but as much as we want to be nvidia fanboys and this is where I find myself in some trouble. And I've actually developed rules based on NVIDIA. Um, regardless of that, you, you got to look at the situation. And what is the situation? Well, you do have EPS that went basically parabolic late 2016. And now here into 2017, expectations were a lot lower at the start of the year. But then they've, they've ticked up again. So what you're hoping for is that there you go charles deep learning supercomputers absolutely so what you're hoping for is that eventually nvidia gets into this stair step pattern that's consistent not to spike up and that kind of thing that's not really healthy but if you start to get this stair step upwards that's when long-term shareholders can buy not worry about it and just let it keep on keeping on I had to get some synth wave music here today to get in the in the digital attitude here for us. But overall, the price consensus in EVS surprise chart is textbook. I mean, it just doesn't get much better than this. It's glorious, fantastic, a wonderful thing to behold, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong here. Let's look at the detailed estimates page, see what we can dig out. So here we are at 171. Um, Yes, I was very bullish in December. I said the stock could be 250. I'm gonna keep hammering that home. I'm also gonna find my first, my first ever Bloomberg appearance, um, where I think I was buying, I was buying Nvidia calls um, at 26. I think it was. Um, so that's yeah, that's how long we've been talking Nvidia. Zach's rank number two buy. They're going to report after the bell tomorrow. So you got the rest of the trading day today and all of tomorrow to figure out what it is that you want to do. The industry is in the top 8% right now of our Zach's industry rank. So it's just hot. The whole industry is hot. Now, here's the surprising part for me for NVIDIA is that you have this 37% revenue growth slated for this quarter. But next quarter, it slows considerably to 6.85. Now, remember, guys, cycles. Cycles, right? So what I mean by that is they have a whole new product cycle that's coming in, a whole new, whole new generation of, of uh, graphics cards, which I'll probably hop on that next generation thanks to Zach's. So one of the perks of being here at Zach. Anyway, the current year... Still looking at 19.82%, but the next year slows to 12.3. So 
here, I mean, this is where the concerns are, is in the slowing revenue growth, despite all these crazy claims that we're making, right? That we're looking at the stock that's just, just tearing it up and has so much demand for its product and could be expanding into, into all sorts of other, other aspects. And yeah, and then you get speculation like this, like they're gonna have dedicated crypto mining cards that could definitely help this thing out. And then now you've got a little bit of that AMD play, right? Where Bitcoin now is up, they don't have to worry about the fork. And I mean, there's so many moving parts to this, but when it comes down to it, you'd like to see that better reflected, not in the current quarter revenue, but in the revenues out here. Now let's look at the EPS numbers. So we're still gonna have great EPS for this quarter, but look again, next quarter. Contraction. Contraction in EPS. That's really jumping off the page at me and it should jump off the page at you too. And how forgiving is Wall Street gonna to be to see 57% but then see 4% contraction in EPS next quarter. So you see why it's so difficult, why I've personally had a tough time trading these NVIDIA reports because you're just as bullish as you want to be about the stock. You see these warning signs on the horizon and it's upsetting. 4% contraction in EPS is, is not, that's upsetting to me. Now the current year number is still 19.93% growth, but the next year again, these slowing. So it, if you take all of this out of the equation and you're just looking at a company that's got 12.3% revenue growth for next year, 12.65% revenue, uh, EPS growth rather for next year. Is this what we want to pay? You know, what are we paying for this now? 55 times earnings. You want to pay 55 times for 12% growth next year. So it gets, you get in these sticky situations. Now analysts, We've got one brave soul that's ticked up their earnings for over the last 30 days for the next quarter, current year, and next year. And if you look down at the, the trend here, it's basically been stuck on 69 cents for the current quarter. Next quarter has gone from 78 up to 80. So it is improving a little bit. Current year number from 307 up to 308. Next year from 339 to 347. And yeah, see Jeff and Danny, what I'm saying is it is all about that foreign, that forward guidance. And we're going to talk more about this. I'm not going to let that. That's, that's going to be the key to today's discussion. It's all about this forward guidance. Now we look at the surprises. They've surprised consistent, consistently. 7 cents, 26 cents, 16s, and 16s. It's been some upside surprise. Okay. Now... Let's dig in, take a look at more on these revenues, right? So we've got the historical revenue. Hasn't been that fantastic, the growth. I mean, 13% in 2015, 7% in 2016. You get 37% in 2017. Yeah, that's great. And that's really when NVIDIA shares started to skyrocket, right? But now that this is slowing to 19% and 12%, how will the market feel about it? Is the, ex, is the estimate Zach's consensus or Zach's EPS surprise? Charles, can you clarify that a little bit? Um, and I will try to answer it. So if you're talking about this, let's go back. Talking about this surprise? Or are you talking about this estimate trend? Because this here is the Zach's consensus, right? So all the analysts that are out there, we get their consensus number. And then as they increase their earnings estimates, we change this number. Well, we don't change it. The actual number itself, the calculation, has in fact changed. So then this moves, right? Whereas now this surprise is compared to that Zach's consensus estimate. Now remember, we, we take out things like employee stock options and that kind of stuff in there, okay? So um, sometimes our number will be different from you know the number you see on the street. Okay. Now, 
back to the revenues. So you've still got revenue growth. So this is still a good thing. And, and the other thing is these numbers aren't surprises, right? We know sort of where these numbers are slated to be. And if the market is, is already pricing this in, they're, they're, they already understand that, yes, we're looking for a little bit of contraction, maybe an EPS. Um, now, now that's the thing is what happened in this quarter that got that jump? Well, now you're on a new, a new cycle with new cards, right? So that's what you're comparing yourself to next quarter before your next card is going to, is going to drop. So I think these estimates will end up changing. I think the guidance ends up coming in a little bit nicer than people think it is. If they consistently beat the estimates, how reliable are the estimates? I think the estimates are as reliable as the guys making them. Um, NVIDIA does a good job of tempering the expectations of analysts, so I think that's a good thing. Um, the more mature a company becomes, the closer these numbers get. With NVIDIA, you've got a few wild cards with all this tech. That's why we see this happen. Okay. You know what I'm going to. You know what I need. <clears throat> Good old consolidated surprise here. Um, obviously a great quarter last quarter. Negative 4% the quarter before. Then you get a 25, a 7, a 13, and 11. So basically, five out of six, the thing moves at least 7%. Four out of six, it moves 11%. It's had some pretty sizable moves. Just surprising. When you see this, just to the skies. To the skies. All right, so market, you see the move that we've seen. Let's look at what the uh, options market is pricing into this. So change from the stacked view to the side by side. The stock's at a buck 70. That's where we're going, folks. 170s. The 170 call is 810 by 815. We'll just call it 813. Add the at the money put. 685 by 695 so we'll call that 690 markets looking for 15 bucks on a buck 70 it's looking for about 8.8 percent .8 here 15 bucks on a buck 70 so 155 to 195 right is that what we're talking uh i mean 155 185 rather okay 155 to 185 let's pull up our technical chart up not look at that let's look at this we could see this little trend line across the tops that they broke and now it's just off to the races right let's gap here and run now the 50 day let's get the exact price of the 50 day 156 um, shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that that's awful close to 155. So I, that's what that options market's pricing in. I'd say from a technical perspective to the downside, they've got that keyed in pretty darn good. Absolutely a little bit of disappointment. This thing gets to the 50 day for sure. Now it's interacted with the 50 day. I, you know what? I'm gonna have to slide this back. One of, one of the cool features of, of freestockcharts.com you know, you can adjust what your time frame is and then slide it along so you're zoomed in. And I like doing this to show times when NVIDIA's come back to that 50-day moving average. So it had some interaction here in September 2016, October 2016. Another retrace back to the 50-day. Spent some time below it, but gaps up. Here's an earnings. 
with a gap up and then it's running away. This actually might have been my NVIDIA. I think this was my um, my maiden voyage on uh, Bloomberg uh, where I talked about NVIDIA. I think this was the move. Um, off to the races, right? So it definitely interacts with this 50-day moving average is, my, uh, is the moral of my story here. So if it comes under pressure, you can expect that to provide at least a little bit of support. And then if it gets down there and it starts to linger for a little bit, we're gonna have a situation like this where you had kind of a forgotten quarter for NVIDIA. So we do see new highs, right? Yesterday was a new 52 all-time high, not even 52-week high, right? All-time high. And then we just came down a little bit. Now that's all happening while the NASDAQ is giving up a little ground. I think this NASDAQ has to retest the 50-day again, if not dip below it. Um, but so that's happening and, and NVIDIA's hanging in there. So still plenty of bullishness here on NVIDIA and even looking at the money flows crossed over in May, came down to touch zero. This is the thing though, when there's a gap, this money flow gets all screwed up. So we have to kind of skip 21 days into it. I know it's upsetting, but you can't say from here, there's definitely been some more accumulation of this stock and then so 185 to the upside i mean you know who knows right at that point it just doesn't matter what we can do give ourselves this move to the highs right let's go from this low to the highs give you some fibs so the 50 percent fib would be right at the 50 day so that's pretty darn good um, and if you want to draw yourself some targets, you can use FIB extensions. So since we're, you know, the positive direction is down this way, right? So 50% retracement is down here. Up here would have to be, I'd have to use a negative number. So I'm going to say the negative 38.2. So there you see that target sort of 188-ish. So just outside the realm. So this is really technically queuing itself up right along with what the options market is saying. So 155, the floor, a little bit over 185, the ceiling here on NVIDIA, okay? That's what it looks like. At least we're getting some confirmation from the technical, so that's a good thing. All right, folks, what I'm gonna do, not even looking at this front month, going all the way out to September, Give yourself some time for the post earnings drift to take place, especially on NVIDIA, right? Drift, 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 sideways action, drift, right? And if you zoomed in here, you'd see that most of these are actually little drifts upward. So the stock has a tendency to drift after earnings, which is great because that plays into our analysis here. So I think you go out to the September contract and reassess the situation there. Now, go, don't do the side-by-side -side view. Do the stack view. This way you got calls on the, on the top and all the puts on the bottom. So a couple ways to do this. Of course, we can get vertical on these call spreads and put spreads, but it's going to be a little expensive. Or you could sell those out-of-the-money call and out-of-the-money put spreads past where you believe that the stock is, is going to end up, is, is, is going to go. So we're going to do both. We're going to do both sets. Okay. I'm going to do bear credit, bull credit, bear debit, bull debit. Okay. We're going to give you four different options here, four different option strategies. And I'll explain sort of each one. So a more aggressive trade here, would be you expect NVIDIA to drift higher. You expect it to get up to that 185 level after earnings, okay? Giving it a month or so to do it. So you would go long this 170 call. This is the September 15th. 
and simultaneously go short the 185. That 170 call is going to cost you 11.85 to put on. Simultaneously going short or selling the 185 call, you're going to get back 6.05 of that. So here the net outlay is going to be 580, which is a little bit more expensive than we typically like to show people here, right? I'm trying to show you guys trades that you can put on for 250 bucks, something like that. That's kind of what my target is. Um, but you got to understand when you're when you got a bigger bigger stock like this gonna have this okay um, and Dean I like where your head's at too we can talk about that so anyway so this so in this case this is a bull debit would be long the September 15th 170 185 call spread for 580 net debit okay so in this case, your net outlay is 580. The difference in the strike prices is $15. Minus that 580 means you can make 920 on this trade on that 580 investment or 158%. What you would need to make 158% on your money is shares of Nvidia would have to close at or below, I mean, I'm sorry, at or above 185 at expiration. And you'd basically have to hold it until that expiration because if, or, you need Nvidia to really skyrocket because as there's still time left on this 185 call that you're short, it's going to cost you more to cover that, right? So that's kind of working against you. But as that date approaches, you're going to approach that 158% gain level. Okay. So that is the bull debit. So if you're bullish on the stock, you think it's going to go up to 185, this is going to make the most money. So this is like four stars worth of risk here. On the flip side, if you're bearish on NVIDIA, you could go long a put spread. So here you would buy the 170 put instead of the 170 call, still targeting all the way down to that 155 level. So here, the 170 put is gonna cost you 1050. Simultaneously selling the 155 put, you're gonna get back four 48 of that so your net outlay is 602 difference in the strike prices is still $15 minus that 602 you can make 895 on 602 or hundred and forty nine percent now what has to happen there is shares of Nvidia would have to close at or below 155 at expiration on September 15th same scenario you're gonna have to hold it all the way until September 15th if you have a chance of maxing out that percentage right because otherwise there's going to be time value and implied volatility still in that 155 put that you are short. So here I'm gonna say that the bear debit is going long the September 15th, 170, 155 put spread for a 602 net debit, okay? Now for you guys that wanna be on the credit side of things, right? This way, this is less risky on the credit side for a couple of reasons. One, because of the way that we're gonna construct it. We're gonna go a little out of the money. So that's gonna help mitigate that risk some. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go a little sooner. Now, Dean, I like where your head's at on the three-day condor, but for this, just this credit, these two credit spreads, I wanna show you guys this 818 because I, I don't wanna, I've been getting into this habit of selling something in the reaction and using that condor because basically I'm saying well the earnings report is not going to affect it as much as people think initially but I want to keep leaning on my earnings analysis here and the strength of the Zach's rank which means we need you almost need time for the noise to kind of cancel itself out so oh look at this face we know this guy we know this guy Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Bolin has joined us. We would luckily he he hid his face, um, which is a good thing that he that he hid his face on his uh, little moniker there. Um, trust me, you don't want to see that giant head. All right, so we're gonna look at the August 18th um, expiration here, 
And that's what we're going to do. We're going to look out, out of the money here. So this is a bearish case. This is a lower risk bearish case, right? In the other bearish case that we were looking at, the September expiration, we were saying we need NVIDIA to push all the way down to 155. In this bearish scenario, we're just saying we want NVIDIA to stay below 185. So we're just saying it, it won't blow through the top end of the range. So this is lower on the risk scale. So what you would do here, this is the August 18th. This would be selling the 185 call. You're going to get 378 for selling that call. Simultaneously buying the 187.50 to protect yourself from unlimited risk. You're going to get, you're going to have to pay 318. So here your net outlay is 60 cents, right? Difference in the strike prices is 250 minus at 60 cents is 190. That's the amount of money you have at risk here. So you can make 60 cents on 190 or 31 and a half percent. And all you need is shares of Nvidia not to blow through 185 at expiration. Okay. So you noticed that's a lot less there, right? A lot less in terms of risk, but also a lot less in terms of reward. Okay. So here's a bear depth, bear credit rather, which is short the August 18th, 185, 187.50 call spread for a 60 cent net credit. Okay. All right. Now the bulls can do the same thing. You get into the put spreads, you go out of the money to 155 and you see what these guys are going to pay you. So remember this is south of the 50 day moving average. So here you would sell the 155 call for 252 simultaneously, I mean 155 put, okay? 155 put for 252. Simultaneously going long the 15250 put for 201. So here you're going to get 51 cents. The amount at risk is 199 because the difference in strike price is 250 minus that 51 is a buck 99. So here you can make 25.6%. So this is the bull credit short August 18th, 155, 152.50 put spread for a 51 cent net debit, uh, net credit rather, okay? Okay. Now I want to touch base on what some of you guys are talking about here, just going to this front week, right? So what if we just went boom, front week, and we've done these a couple of times. We've had some success, but we've had some failure. Tesla was a failure by using the strategy, but we're still going to look at this. So let's look at the same strikes. So we're going to go out. 185 to 187.50. Okay. So 263 minus 209. So in this case, 54 cents is what you'd get for this part of a condor potentially. And then now on the put side, We've got the 155 for 155 and the 152.50, 111. So here you get 44 cents, okay? So on this iron condor, you would get 44 plus 54 or 98 cents net credit for this condor, right? Okay, now the difference in the strike price is the most that you can still lose is 250 minus the 98 net credit. So 152, so you're making 64% is what you could make on this iron condor. If shares of Nvidia stay in between 155 and 185 following the earnings report. Now remember, 
Today's Wednesday. They're reporting Thursday after the close. So you really only have Friday. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you guys, if you are in fact looking at doing a condor, okay, don't put it on today, right? Wait because you're directionally, directionally unbiased pretty much, right? You don't care. You're not like really bullish on the stock. You're not really bearish on the stock. You just think it's going to stay within a couple of constraints. Wait till tomorrow, go out 15 bucks to either side because and get it right before the close. Because you're, you're adding the, the risk of the rest of the day today and then the risk of tomorrow and you're not being compensated for it at all. Because the major event risk is on Thursday night. So just wait and put it on tomorrow. If you guys are out there doing the condor, see a couple of you guys talking about it, that's certainly an option, right? Um, if that's what you want to do, that, that's, what you, that's what you do. Now, for those of you that are directionally biased, meaning you're looking at either the bull debit or bull credit or bear debit or bear credit, whatever, those you can put on today. You, you don't have to worry about, about, uh, about earnings. You can put those on today, okay? Um, so there you go. So, of course, I've got to give you what I believe is the trade that pays. Um, at, this, at the risk of sounding like a complete putz, um, yeah, sure, Charles. Let me let me. I think the trade that pays is uh, is the bull credit. Um, it's safer, yes. It's a little bit more conservative, yes. But I like the bull credit. I do. So I'm going to say trade that pays is bull credit. So that's that's the August 18th put spread, right? Um, it, the the iron condor charles was um short august what's tomorrow what's today where am i 11th august 11th 155 152 51 85 187 50 for 98 cents net credit okay so I think the trade that pays is the bull. Um, for the degenerate gamblers out there, you're not degenerate gamblers. I know I'm just messing with you. But the guys who, who like to get really aggressive, it's going to be hard to put a lotto together here on NVIDIA um, because they're expensive, right? Does anybody really want to spend $260 on a 185 call? I don't know that you do. Um, on the bull credit, same wait till tomorrow. No, no, Dean, I don't think on the bull credit, you wait till tomorrow. I think if you have a bias, you think this thing is going to continue to tick up and you're only going to get it. Uh, you're only going to get it better. Okay. Um, no, the bull credit. I, I mean, I typed it right there. Bull credit short August 18th, 155. Uh, I meant it when I typed it. If you want to do a bull credit 811, go ahead. The reason I'm doing this another week out is I get paid a little bit more. Because um, if you notice, the iron condor here for August 11th is only 98 cents. But if you did the same condor going out to August 18th, it's 111, right? But again, I'm going with the bull credit. August 18th, 155, 152, 50 put spread for 51 cents. I like the fact that that 50 days down there, lots of support. If you guys are bullish looking for some sort of short term kind of bang for your buck thing, these are very expensive. Um, but you could go with an out of the money call spread. So if you're if you if you really want to get the uh, the 185, 195. It's going to cost you 160, but your upside potential is going to be 840. But you'd need Nvidia to get all the way up to 195. That feels like a long way from here. Okay. Um. So that's I I guess that's what I'm going to say the lotto is, right? I'm going to say. 
Lotto um, is a 185, 195 for uh, for 160. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up today, man. Um, <laughs> I wish I I know we were talking to I was talking to Jeff about this. Like he's got the Discord thing, and then like everybody can just talk. But the problem is, I feel like we all just be like. Blah, 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 blah. Um, you guys are so funny. You, you know I typo all the time. I'm I'm like the worst. But I, I'm usually sitting here like yelling at myself while I'm doing it because it's happening live. Um, and you guys can see me like I'm, I'm like blah, 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 and then I'm like, like trying to go back and fix it all the time. I'm like ah, well, trying to go back and fix it. it just never works. Anyway. Um, all right, guys. Now here's the most important part about today. These guys are reporting after the bell on Thursday. So where are you going to be on Friday morning? That's what's up. Friday morning, we're doing the morning after NVIDIA. So that means we're going to have live reaction to what the market did on Friday morning. And hopefully come up with a fantastic trade idea so we can either fade this move or lean into the move or whatever. Um, and and have an actionable have actionable items for Friday morning. So we've had some success with the Friday morning uh, meetup meetups. Everybody is uh, is uh, having having a good time. So there we go. Ah, you know what? you got a good question, Jeff. What about downside protection for long term shareholders? Um. There's a couple of strategies that you could use as a long-term shareholder. You can sell you could sell a call out of the money to finance your protective put to the downside. So by this you could sell a 185 call if you have 100 shares of stock. That'll give you 260 and then you could use that 260 to buy, you know, puts down here, right? So you can buy the 157.50, have money left over, or you can buy the 160, kind of collar it over there. Um, so that's one strategy. The other strategy is if you have more money to invest, you could just sell a 160 put, and if it gets put to you, you got a little bit of money, um, and, and you're buying it cheaper. So it depends on what your strategy is, sort of long term. Bolinator. Um, actually, I believe I am, um, we, we shall see, but I'm pretty sure in a little bit, I'm not going to care about how much mileage I put on any cars. Um, so there you go, folks. So live with Dave on Friday, Bolin, you should join us. You should join us on Friday. For, for those of you that don't know, Brian Bolin is the editor of the illustrious stocks under 10 here with Zach's, um, and uh, and and knows quite a bit about uh, about the market and short-term trade ideas and fantastic stuff. So I'm gonna try and get him. We're gonna try and guilt Brian into coming with us. Basically, I'm trying to you know I'm I'm just trying to get other people to do the work for me. Is uh is is what uh, is what we're trying to do. I, I'm working on some on some. Uh, some tech stuff, uh, so so get them skyped in or something, or or we'll we'll feel. Oh, there we go. It's gonna be here on Friday. All right, guys. So Friday morning, 9 a.m. Central. We're gonna do the morning after. Um, so if you're hungover, make sure you get your uh, your Bloody Mary in you ahead of that. All right. So thanks so much for hanging out with me here today, guys. I will see you all manana because we've got a show on Macy's and then Friday. Have a good one, folks.